Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our next session at the R Conference. We've got Athanasia Mowinkle, who's a staff science at the Centre for the Lifespan Changes in Brain and Cognition from the University of Oslo with us this morning. And she's going to take us through how she's um, used ggplot2 polygon and spatial data to plot brain atlases. So I will just hand you over to Athanasia now. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, uh, I have a small echo myself, so I'm just going to figure out why. I didn't have that before. So that's me. Okay, it's so I'm going to start. Is really odd. We can't hear the echo, but when I had an echo earlier, I had two Crowdcast windows open. Which I don't, oh, maybe I do. Uh, so I think folk are rejoining now, so it might be worth um, doing the intro again. I think there's a little delay when they when they come. Oh no, uh, Athanasia will be with us shortly. She just said she disconnected from the wrong one. Um, okay, um, sorry about the delay. Uh, for all participants, so if you can just uh, uh, have some wave and say hi, so we can make sure that you are here um, as well. So it would be very helpful. Um, so now we're waiting while Athanasia will be rejoining. So I would say in preparation that this is the first interactive slide session I've seen today uh, in which there is a 3D plot of the brain, no less. Um, so uh, whilst there is a short delay and I've had the start of this slightly, uh, I'd, I'd welcome you to stay on on the on the line whilst our colleague just joins us. It's a long way from Oslo and uh, I think she's back on the line now. Athanasia, yeah. do you want to just check your echo? <laughs> uh, I cannot hear myself in echo anymore. So that's... that's brilliant. I will just reintroduce you because I think we still Sorry have about that. Um, okay, we will, and I think we will potentially just let this session overrun for a few couple of minutes at the end as well, um, just to play a little bit of catch up and then we can catch up properly during the extended break at lunchtime. So, Apologies for the small delay with the technical issues. Um, a big welcome to Athanasia Mowinkle. She's a staff scientist at the Centre for Lifespan Changes in Brain and Cognition from the University of o Oslo. She's going to talk to us today about using ggplot2 polygon and spatial data to plot brain analysis. So I will just hand over. Thank you, Anna okay. Athanasia. Okay, good. So now I don't hear myself an echo. I fixed all the technical difficulties. So sorry about delaying everyone. I will uh, attempt to make it up, which I think I can. Um, so yeah, thanks for the introduction and thanks for um, having me here. Just I've already been introduced and what I'm talking about is been introduced. I just want to say again, this is me. Uh, what I look on on a normal day at work <laughs> when there's not COVID and I'm not just working from home. Um, I have a PhD in cognitive psychology um, and currently I uh, work mostly on our package development and other in-house research software development, development for our lab. You can find me on Twitter and GitHub and I have a website or a book where I may blog about R and um, using R and using R with neuroimaging, which is like my main uh, task. I am part of a project called Life Brain, which is a EU consortium that aims to look at how uh, the brain and cognition and mental health develops throughout uh, life. Um, and we have partners all around the EU. We have several partners in the UK, which is how I heard about this conference and I thought uh, I wanted to give you a talk about how uh, me and my colleague uh, Didak here in Oslo um, developed uh, first a workflow and then a package for uh, using 
spatial information from the brain because the brain is a 3D spatial object. Um, so uh, how we use spatial information um, to plot in ggplot directly um, the brains that we were working on. So um, without further ado, let's go a bit into that. So just for those of you who I'm guessing most of you do not work in neuroimaging, just a short introduction about how people usually work and uh, why this um, package that we made uh, improves our workflows and the transparency of our analyses and the presentations of our analyses. So usually when you do MRI analysis, which, which is what I do, um, um, people use like specialized software to, to analyze the brains like FSL, which is um, developed uh, at Oxford University or FreeSurfer, which is developed at Harvard, um, or special packages within uh, MATLAB, for instance, SPM, or in Python, um, uh, like the NiPipe uh, package. So usually we will run analysis on the in command line tools to, to, to look at how the brain um, is different between people and, and relate that to different measures as, of uh, and mental health and when we look at the brain we we usually look at um, 3d pixels which we called voxels which are like 3d um, one uh, millimeter cubic squares or cubes i guess <laughs> um, uh, and usually we have about a hundred thousand uh, of these cubes per person uh, and over um, uh, and over uh, a specific allotted time. So we end up having quite a lot of data from one person. And running MRI analysis, which is great, it actually requires a lot of computations um, and a lot of multiple comparisons, which uh, anyone who works in stats knows uh, is quite a big problem. So one of the things we quite often do is that we segment the brain into meaningful functional or structural uh, regions. And rather than looking at each um, cube and, and correlations between each of these cubes, we create these atlases, which is what we call them, of the brain. So this is an image representation of one of the most common um, brain atlases uh, used. It's called the desikin kiliani cortical atlas. Um, and here on the top is what we call an inflated brain, uh, which is basically the same uh, brain as you see below it, but where we've kind of inflated the brain like a balloon so that these like different grooves in the brain become more exposed and we can, we can get a better idea of what's actually happening in the, in the bottom of the grooves, which are uh, hidden by the kind of tops. So we we usually inflate the brain in this way so we can have a better idea of the different brain regions. And then you can see here, this is a, a structural um, uh, parcellation of the brain where um, each of these grooves or um, not grooves, we call them uh, sulci, um, becomes their own like region based on a uh, known um, brain anatomy. And then we extract um, metrics like surface area or the thickness, the cortical thickness of these different areas, and we use that in our statistical models. And these statistical models we usually run in specialized statistical software, not imaging software like R. Uh, my brain uses uh, my lab, also my brain, I guess. Uh, <laughs> my lab uses R quite a lot because we do a lot of longitudinal modeling. Um, so there are great packages in R for um, linear mixed models or uh, generalized additive mixed models, uh, which are very handy for us to use, which are difficult to find in other software. So we keep switching between these um, specialized neuron imaging software and then R um, to do the statistical models. And then we go back into the specialized neuro imaging software to project our stats onto the brain. This backwards and forwards is quite cumbersome and it makes our workflows uh, not so transparent. So that is why we developed um, 
what now has become a suite of packages. It started as a single package just for 2D polygons that represent these inflated brains that we work on. Uh, it then kind of spiraled into a, third, a second package, which represents the brain in 3D uh, tri-surface plots through Plotly, uh, which is very convenient when you're working with the subcortical structures, which we cannot inflate. Um, and they're just much, much trickier to represent as 2D polygon uh, data. And then thirdly, we created this ggseg extra package to, to make it easier for other users to create their own specialized, their own atlases to be used with ggseg or ggseg3d, and also to install other known uh, atlases that don't uh, ship with these packages. So <clears throat> the first thing um, that basically Didoc figured out was how to create vector data so that we could plot the desiccant Kiliani atlas as 2D polygons in ggplot. And then we made these um, ggplot wrapper function that we call ggseg um, that you could, uh, you could uh, plot the data with. It has quite similar syntax to ggplot2 for those who are familiar with it, obviously because it's built on ggplot2. But you will notice that it's not uh, ggplot geom in any way because we need to do quite a lot with the data for it to be represented um, as a plot. <clears throat> but the similar syntax should make it um, pretty easy for people who are ggplot savvy to understand how to uh, to work with it. And once the ggseg uh, function has been called, new um, other types of ggplot scalers or themes or even animations, we've successfully made uh, animations with gganimate um, work quite well uh, um, with it. Um, and it's also possible, like by default, it plots all of the brain um, segments, which is here the left lateral and medial side and the right medial and lateral side uh, of the brain, you can also change the position to what we call stacked, which will place the left and the right um, hemispheres on top of each other rather than on a single line so that you, you get a more like compact uh, view. So this way the user can kind of um, alternate between um, what is more convenient for their publications, which I am guessing is the most uh, common um, thing people do with this. I see, I also forgot to take away <laughs> some messages that weren't supposed to be part of this presentation, but there they are. Um, <clears throat> so here I just synthesized a small little uh, data set with um, for brain regions with the completely random <laughs> sampled p-values and use that data to plot my p-values uh, onto ggplot, uh, onto the ggseg um, function. So this is just me trying to show that you can use your own data and, and supply it to ggseg, also give it the atlas information of which atlas you want to use it on, and then it should match um, the regions uh, of your data to the regions in the atlas um, and create a plot that um, can clearly distinguish what brain regions you, for instance, here have results on. Um, the data I made also actually has different groups. And one of the things we have experienced uh, difficulties with is having grouped uh, or faceting uh, our ggseg uh, plots is a little bit cumbersome because the function actually merges the atlas data with your data. And if the ggseg function doesn't know what are the groups in your data, it won't facet them correctly. So um, the easiest way we found to fix this was to um, basically uh, force the user to twice um, let the workflow know that there are groups. First, grouping by using the dplyr group by function, the column in your data where you have groups in, in my data that I synthesized, the column name is group, then giving it to the ggseg function and then adding a facet wrap over group at the end. And then you produce these two facets, one for G1 and one for G2 on top of each other. 
And then you can see that there are differences in the p-values for these four different regions. Of course, this is like completely uh, inane example because the p-values are just made up, but it shows uh, a little bit of the functionality that exists uh, in this package. Um, I mentioned before that uh, 2D polygons of subcortical structures are a little bit difficult because we cannot inflate them. There's nothing to inflate in the subcortex. They are pre-inflated in a way. Um, so representing them as these lovely inflated um, polygons is not possible. So um, when it comes to the subcortical atlases, uh, using here the ASEG, which is the, probably the second most common um, atlas, um, the most common subcortical at atlas, um, it's rather represented as slices of the brain with uh, the different uh, regions um, as polygons within that. Um, there's a lot more to say about how tricky the subcortex is uh, for these packages. So that's not, I'm afraid to say, <laughs> it's not our main purpose for the package. It is possible, as you can see, but it is quite uh, difficult. The cortical surface is much, much easier to work with. Um, so even though, like, um, I did say ggplot first, uh, I'm just going to briefly show you uh, using the 3D triangular meshes, uh, which we do through Plotly, which is something I was, um, yeah, I'm quite chuffed <laughs> of uh, how we managed to make it. Um, it's quite similar um, to a lot of uh, Plotly uh, functions that you know from before. We have a wrapper for it, so. Um, you shouldn't need a lot of extra information to actually make a simple plot here. We just um, tell Gigi say that we want to plot the DK 3D atlas and it creates this nice interactive uh, plot <laughs> that you can swivel around. Um, this is particularly nice if you are developing a workflow or if you are, for instance, making some sort of shiny application to go with your paper or for public dissemination or um, or for a website uh, to give like users, maybe give participants, maybe give stakeholders uh, a more like tangible thing to work on on the brain and to kind of navigate and learn a little bit about it because it took me like five years of studies to learn different ways of segmenting the brain and there I'm still learning new ways of segmenting it. So um, it's a nice kind of feature um, for those who need it. Um, and actually, even though I couldn't include the subcortical structure here because it made my presentation so big that it didn't want to load anymore, the, um, um, the 3D representations through pl Plotly are much better suited for the subcortical structures uh, because it retains its original, um, all of the three dimensions of the original subcortical structure, so it's much easier to navigate. It's much easier to actually uh, add all of that. And I'm sorry I couldn't have an example of it here. It was just, uh, it just wouldn't load <laughs> when I included it. And thirdly, very briefly, the GGSEC Extra package we developed with the pure intention of making it easier for other people to create their own atlases. Um, and use ggseg or ggseg 3d um, with their custom atlases because there are so many ways of um, parcelating the brain into into different functional or structural properties um, that it's just not possible for me and Didac alone um, to sit and make all of these atlases um, it would be a full-time job and I'm sorry to say there are no funders <laughs> that would make that uh, possible for us to do so we dedicated quite a lot of um, resources into creating the GGSEG extra package that would make it easier to, one, uh, actually locate other available public atlases that have been made to, to work with the GGSEG packages and two, to creating your own custom atlases when you need it. 
So firstly, there's a function that will list all of the known uh, ggseg atlases that exist out there now. Currently, they are all made by us um, with some help, like the ggseg uh, Harvard Oxford cortical atlas that was actually contributed and then kind of cleaned up a little bit by one of our users. So that was extremely exciting to have um, someone uh, contribute something. Um, and then the rest we have made and <clears throat> sorry, that was a bit fast. Uh, and yeah, sorry, my mouse was a bit sensitive here. I'm gonna not touch it anymore. Um, so there are quite a lot. Some of them are just for 3D atlases. Some of them are just for 2D atlases. It really does depend on the type of atlas. Some atlases are easier, as I said, to represent as 3D, like the white matter tracts uh, and the subcortical ones, while um, the cortical ones are easier to make into polygons. So it's kind of um, depends on that. Uh, and then you, there are easy install functions to install the atlases. Like here, I installed the uh, Yale uh, 2011 parcellation based on a paper by, by Yale in 2011 for seven and 17 different types of networks, functional networks in the brain, um, which is a new, quite commonly used uh, segmentation now. Um, so it still, it gives the same familiar kind of functionality as the other, as um, the Desiki and Kiliani atlas. So if you know how to use one, you should know how to use uh, all the other atlases. If, the functionality is the same. Uh, and then there are the functions that will help you make uh, atlases. So creating um, an RPARC, which is a, a cortical atlas, this is just nomenclature in the field, into a 3D atlas. We have a specific function that does that. So if you have um, the mesh failure from, for instance, FreeSurfer, um, this function will just create the entire 3D atlas for you. And once you have the 3D, the GGSEG 3D atlas, um, you can easily make that into a polygon atlas um, with this second function. So um, this new workflow, which we haven't actually completely released yet, um, it's in the development branch of our project. Um, it seems to be working in most, but not all uh, cases. So we're quite, Enthused um, about that, uh, but Five we don't minutes. have. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I want to mention a couple of upcoming features, which we are also quite excited about. Um, for instance, we are implementing proper S3 methods for those who know um, and S3 objects. So before the atlases were just normal uh, data frames. Now they've become um, S3 objects, which gives us uh, a lot more room to play with uh, and make specialized functions for you to work with. So now in the, if you install from the development branch calling DK, which is the data set for the Desiccan and Kiliani Atlas, it will give you a bit more information, like it's a cortical atlas, how many regions it has, that it has the left and the right hemisphere, it has a lateral and a medial view, and what um, future function you should be using. Uh, which is ggplot and geombrain rather than ggseg, which I will get to very shortly. Um, there are specialized fun, um, methods so that if you plot just an atlas, it will just create a plot rather than having to write lots of ggseg code. Just plotting an atlas will give you an overview of the atlas as is. <clears throat> and an easy way to extract the name of the brain regions, which is something users have been struggling with, is figuring out how to actually uh, write the regions in the correct way. Now you can extract them easily and see uh, how they're written. And the new workflow goes from polygons to working with SSF uh, spatial. And this is quite exciting because it gives us a lot more um, uh, flexibility in terms of how we want to plot them. Uh, like here, it's now possible to not just say position to be stacked um, uh, or not. You can say I want it stacked. I want it positioned by hemisphere then side, or by side and then hemisphere, or by side and hemisphere all in the same. So the user gets a lot more um, flexibility. Um, um, for GCSEC extra. We have a workflow that seems to kind of almost work for everyone uh, in making subcortical uh, spatial objects. 
Um, but it requires either a Linux or a Mac because it requires FreeCypher, uh, which does not work on Windows currently. Um, so I re recommend for those working in neuroimaging or um, um, or the like to check out the Neuroconductor package or, or um, well, it is a package, but it contains lots of packages for neuroanalysis in R. And for those working with non-brains, other organisms, um, there's a GG Anatogram uh, package by Jesper and Mag, uh, which has digestive systems, neural systems of mouse, mice and humans and cells. It's really awesome, very highly recommended. Um, the whole point of this talk was that um, don't think of geospatial data as just being maps. It can be other types of objects as well. Like for my case, it's brains. For Jesper Mag, it's the human body, the remaining human body. So there's lots of things you could do with geospatial data that's not geo. <laughs> So thanks to our lab for uh, funding us to develop these tools, and um, thanks for listening on behalf on behalf of Didac and uh, myself. Thank you so much. That's generated so much interest in the comments and questions. I'm going to sneak a question in, um, which we just about got time for, which is just some of our audience are asking if um, it's possible to see what the data has to look like to go into the system. And the other thing that I want to just run by you is Mohammed is actually asking if people are interested in a workshop to actually have a look at how you've done this in much more detail. And it does feel, looking at the comments, that people are interested. Yeah, um, uh, I'd be uh, happy to have a workshop on how we did this. It's, uh, I have to say, it's been a, it's been quite a learning experience from just being a ggplot2 user to being a ggplot2 uh, developer <laughs> uh, and understanding the internals of ggplot2 is uh, interesting. But um, uh, I'm we definitely could hold a workshop about this. That's no problem. Um, in terms of seeing what the data would look like, um, so I guess I didn't actually show it's a bit. So what the data technically needs is the one thing, it, it needs a data frame. And it needs to be a data frame. In this case, I make a table because I'm just used to tidyverse. But it needs to have um, a column called region. And in the region column, there needs to be um, uh, a, vec a character vector that uh, maps onto the region names of the atlas data. So the Atlas data, it's technically also a data frame. It's just a special type of data frame that we made. And in that data frame, there is a region column. So what we do is we search for columns that match between the Atlas and the incoming data, and then we merge them for you so you don't have to do that. And then we use that to plot um, data. You can obviously also choose to do that completely on your own. You can easily join an Atlas and uh, a data frame by yourself and then feed that into any normal ggplot polygon or spatial object, and it will do the same. Uh, we plan on making a small tutorial on showing how people to do that, because then you can use other uh, ggplot spatial functions, like the label functions, which we have not been able to make work with our functions yet. Um, but you could use that if you pre-merge the atlas and the data and then provide it as a geospatial geom instead. So there are other ways of working with it as well. Thank you so much. I need to stop it there because the next session should have started five minutes ago. So a huge thank you, um, Athanasia, and thank you to all our audience. Um, loads to follow up with, which I'm sure Mohammed will be doing later. But um, goodbye, everyone, and see you at the next session. Bye. Thanks.